Yeah, yeah, yeah! Come and take a look at the snow. Bright white as far as your eyesight goes. Come and take a look at the fields of snow. I'll just get my coat, then we're good to go. Come and take a look at the lake. Let's have a quick skate before it gets late. Come and take a look at the frozen lake. Put your clothes on, mate. Don't make that mistake. Greetings, holiday shoppers. There are now 243 shopping days left until Christmas, and I believe you know what that means. It means it's time for another episode of Christmas Creeps, your one-stop shop for holiday movies and TV shows all year round. My name is Joseph Wade. I'll be your host for this evening. Here with me tonight, my co-hosts have once again abandoned me, and that is A-OK, because we have returning guests to talk about this very special Rankin Bass special. It's our pals from the Secret of the Sailor Madness podcast, Dwayne and Niall. What's up, guys? Hey, uh, we're we're doing the bodyguard. No, Mr. President, for for this for the rest of the lads. <laughs> yep, uh, I'm giving you full service too. Oh wow! Oh, that's uh, nice. That's that's not necessary, but we'll take it. <laughs> hey, I got I, I got I got I got to fill in. I'm going to fill in all the way. All right. Mm, well, professional. <laughs> oh man, how have you guys been? Uh, good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we're happy to be here. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's I think that's what that's yeah. what you want to hear. Eh, I don't know. Hey, I think everybody's all going to be a little bit. Oh, it's all right. Can't complain. Wouldn't wouldn't help things, right? Yeah, you know what. <laughs> uh, but this is why you you have these like, times in between like this. We just hey, you get together with friends. You talk about some some crap for uh, <laughs> up to up to and including ninety minutes, uh, <laughs> and you feel it's a little better about you've gone about for a little bit while and. More better than that than Christmas creeps, where it's constantly Christmas Day. It's constantly Christmas. We've been doing this for eight years, and there's no signs of stopping now because you know what? I'm I'm just crazy enough to keep this train rolling. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, g- gentle friends, it's time once again for us to discuss a Rankin Bass feature on the podcast. We haven't covered many of these in the history of the show, uh, but for good reason because uh, these are kind of. I guess they're. I guess you could say they're the gold standard of holiday specials, at least in the animated realm. Hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, would you not say that? Well, uh, <laughs> this would be an interesting kind of way of coming into it. This is certainly the Rankin Bass is an entity that we're <laughs> okay. very much aware of, you know, and became aware of certainly, you know, in the circles that we run in, uh, but a little bit far removed from when it would be the. Uh, what would it be the formative time? We're just like, you know, these were not uh, necessarily yeah, things that were always on for myself and Dwayne, at least at Christmas all the time. We had a whole other different set of what would be the, <laughs> yeah. the beloved Christmas special. You got to throw on every year, no matter what, no matter what's happening. You got to mm-hmm. see this one, otherwise it just, just doesn't feel right, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that's something I do forget from time to time that that uh, this is kind of an America centric podcast because Rankin Bass is very much an American institution. So it may mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. it may not uh, be as popular over over uh, seas as it is here. And even here on Christmas Creeps, we have a, a history of kind of not choosing the popular Rankin Bass <laughs> features. We go for the the C and D tier uh, specials that maybe get talked about a little bit less, and I think that's more fun for us because every everyone knows Rudolph, everyone's talked about Frosty, but today today here we're talking about uh, the 1967 special Cricket on the Hearth, hmm. which is only let's see here, which is only the uh, fourth of the Rankin Bass animated specials, their their second holiday special, so this is very early in kind of the Rankin Bass history, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is also an obscurity within the obscurity. Because here's, first of all, Rankin Bass, your Christmas cartoon company. You know all those favorites that you just mentioned. Here's right. one you probably have no notion of. And it's also based on a Charles Dickens book. Not that Charles Dickens book. If you're a real fan, you're really going to know about this one, which we also made a cartoon of. The other Charles Dickens. No, no. The other, other Charles Dickens book. <laughs> No, not that is... one. Yes, part of that compilation that you didn't read. That's right. Exactly. Mm. This is, yeah, Cricket on the Hearth is one of his, he, he wrote five sort of Christmas novellas. This was his third one. And, you know, for as much as we kind of make fun of Dickens as having uh, gotten paid by the word, this is a very much a case of getting paid by the word because oh yeah, the plot such as it is, and we'll get into that here shortly, is... Mostly nonsensical, but then when you go and you read the actual story, 
he repeats the same sentence four or five times in a paragraph and yeah like the, the claim <laughs> i think was it, it's intending to be like poetical it's like oh it's so it's like it's like it's rhyming with itself and it's just like no i'm just trying to get to the fucking um end line here <laughs> he, he, he writes the same things uh, at both ends and then he's just like you know writes it a little bit until it meets in the middle it's like, oh, okay here we go <laughs> mm, like, caleb caleb had a blind daughter and did i mention he had a blind daughter and did you know his daughter was blind blind in the eyes blind, blind daughter- from sight <laughs> um yeah you you, you brought, lives you in a world one. of darkness yeah i got i got it but not in a cool way no, no, no not in a cruel way at all at all because her father <laughs> loves her very much and mm. makes it makes it as magical as he possibly can hmm. uh, uh yeah like I, I i remember like reading about this kind of stuff when i was um I was reading through The Count of Monte Cristo last year because I was locked indoors like everyone else on planet Earth. Um, right. And it felt appropriate, but it was great crack. It was It's so fucking extra and dramatic all the fucking time. But you can tell this is from the year of being paid by the word. Like, uh, And I was reading about um, Dumas and it was... He had a character in one book who would give monosyllabic answers of just yes, no, sometimes, that kind of thing. <laughs> but that would be like a line break. So he's paid by the line. But eventually he was, he, they changed it so he was paid by the word. He just immediately killed off that character. <laughs> it's just like, this motherfucker's losing me money. Um, so, yeah, it's it's very fun to kind of see these things of... Sometimes, like, you're, Charles Dickens, he's, he's a classic author. He's done wonderful fucking things. Humanity has been improved by his work. But also, sometimes you got to get paid. And this is kind of more so one of those. Absolutely, yes. I guess my first question going into this, uh, were either of you familiar with this going in? I had heard no. of it. <laughs> you had at it. least heard of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My, mind you, this is not a, a suggestion that you made to me. This was me coming to you and saying, would you please help me break this down? Because my co-host said no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, that's fair. Because like I did, I suggested a bunch of stuff to you and uh, you were doing the... Um, <laughs> And I chose none of them, and I'm sorry. No, you, no, you did. You chose the um, the ah, uh, who's your man who did Wizard of Oz and stuff? Um, oh, the the Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. Yeah, you you took that, and you were like, "Who the fuck told us to do this?" And I was just listening to that podcast, laughing away. I was just like, "Ha ha ha, this is great!" Right, because in our in our, our uh, back channel in our notes, I forgot to write who suggested that. <laughs> no, it's grand. It was very funny for me. Um, but I guess Redacted. this is this is the universe paying attention to me. You know, it's just like, well, now I must suffer <laughs> for other people's, for my own sins. Uh, turnabout yeah. is fair play, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I guess for my part, this was one that I had, I'd always heard about, never seen. And hmm. then this past Christmas, you know, I, I was searching for, you know, something other than what we always watch at, at the holiday season. And Christmas Eve, my girlfriend and I put this on. And, you know, we're tired. We had just gotten home from doing Christmas with the family, Hmm. kind of not quite in our right minds. And we're watching this play out on the screen and we're just both baffled by it (laughs) because neither one of us knew what to expect. And just like there's a a cricket who is apparently good luck. And there's a girl who goes blind because her boyfriend died. And now there's a toy maker. And like, what are you talking about? It's it it seems like I, I I get again this is like a heavy adaptation from the original book even but it it very much so feels like you're making it up as you go along and I know that's how stories go but it's just like give me the give me the three act structure on this fucking thing if you can if you fucking can <laughs> yeah can, can you can you set up things in the first act of this that you can pay off in the third act. Yeah. Uh, also, we also we, we we gotta fill a TV like hour long block with this. Uh, how many musical right. numbers can you cram into this for anything and everything? Right, uh, because can, this is can, this is the sixties, yeah. and you have to have songs. Yes. Yeah. 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 Can, can, could they sing their feelings? Is there is a room for that? No. Well, try anyway, please. We beg of you. <laughs> Didn't they have something in reaching about what eight to ten musical numbers in the space of this uh, hour? Which no. That really pants it out. Yeah. In forty nine minutes, uh, and this is also bookended. At least the version we have seen. Uh, introduction as well by uh, <laughs> TV personality and wonderful singer and a friend of St. Jude Children's Hospital, uh, Danny Thomas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Danny Thomas, one of the co- one of the co-creators of the Andy Griffith Show. I wish we had gotten our friends from Breaking Mayberry onto this because they could <laughs> enlighten us about that. 
They oh, had they, a chance. They, they probably would have told us like he died of a massive cocaine injection into his face or something. It's just, they, they would have brought the whole mood uh, down. It's fine. <laughs> pancreatic cancer, all right. No less uh, horrifying. Okay, but, fair enough, fair oh. enough. I, I, I thought it was going to be like one of those very nasty old-fashioned ways of dying. Just the general sucky way. Okay, that, that, that sucks. So, he, 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 from, from most accounts, he'd be a fairly stand-up dude. Hmm. Uh <laughs> and she was again like he was uh founded as like, a foundation of like, the, the friends of saint jude's uh children's hospital uh where he was laid up for a while or uh like he he himself or at least someone in his family or someone who was close to him was laid up in there and uh he always said that i i grew up poor well, so whenever i if when i make it big i'm gonna like give back, Pay back. as yeah, much yeah. as i can to whoever I'm and he made good on that mm-hmm. see that's wonderful i, I love that and hopefully hmm. he took some of this money and he he put that to good use with St. Jude's. Hmm. I, some I, of the yeah. money he made off of this. I kind of wish they told that story instead of this story, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a very pleasant manner as he introduces it. Because uh, it's like, you know, because he, he does come in like, you know, hey, how's it going? I'm Danny Thomas. We're going to have a wonderful uh, animated adaptation of a Charles Dickens classic. Not that one. If you're a real shooter, you know about this other story about a cricket on the hearth. And and then on the other side of it, and so she just kind of gives credit to everybody who played a part. So I was in that obviously as a dad, and my my own my own uh, little daughter Marlo, she was in there too. And it's only like what a great character actors from played the. the it's like the he brought in all his family and his mates and stuff. The way he talks about them, yeah, it's 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 quite nice. The the book ends. I I, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, he's got a, a Tony Bennett esque. Uh, vibe to him, uh, particularly <laughs> his, when he's dismissed with his voice. It's like, oh yeah, Tony Bennett. It's uh, a bit like that. Mm. Even the character design of the dad is just like this. Just looks this could be Danny Thomas, but I'm getting again more Tony Bennett. <laughs> 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 I right. don't know why. It's just a weird thing I brought into it. Mm-hmm. And, and there's like a, a second intro after that because then we're introduced to the main character, Cricket Crockett, who's mm. voiced by Roddy McDowell, the great, mm-hmm. fantastic Roddy McDowell. And this is sort of at the end of his story. He's, he's an old cricket, and he's telling us the story of how he came to live in such a fancy palatial estate. I'm glad they, they changed his character design to be a younger cricket, because his old face was weirding me the fuck out. The- it, I, I assume hmm. it was either they tried to give the old cricket, like, jowls or yes. a beard. And yeah. Either way, it's wrong. It's awful. There's a, there's a fascinating thing about Rankin-Bass animation to me, and they're clearly coming off of their uh, stop-motion stuff, because the characters have very wooden faces that, like, only the mouth is sort of like, it opens on the side, and then, like, it just opens and words come out, because that's the only bit they'd animate on the stop-motion ones. But they do the same thing in traditional animation, in cell animation, in, in this case as well. And it's so weird on a weird cricket face mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just threw me. I was like, "Oh, thank God!" They just gave him like a regular cartoon mouth. That's okay. Oh yeah, it's it's even more unnatural than just a regular animated mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, he's telling us the story of how he came to be uh, in the company of Caleb Plummer, who's played by Dan- Dan- Danny Thomas. He's a toy maker, and he lives with his daughter uh, Bertha, who's voiced by his daughter Marla Thomas. And then you've got her boyfriend Edward, voiced by Ed Ames, who is being shipped off to war. We presume he's got a two-year commission in the in the navy, the uh, merchant marine or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's on a five-year mission, you know, <laughs> whatever <laughs> to conquer. Uh, you, know no, how, those... you know how it went. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Star Trek's on TV at the at the time, so you know he's on a five-year mission and they go missing and never never to be seen again. Hmm. It happens. This is where it breaks down for me because I hate talking about main plots. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, what, what it is is just like, oh, like you know, if he's away for two years, oh, we'll wait for you, we'll, we'll, and when we come back, we'll finally be engaged to be married, and we'll yes, make yes. life for ourselves up. We need to sing a lot of this as well. But oh no, says this horrifying green man. He looks at I don't know, he's a goblin arrives door, like to a... tell them, "Is like, hey, I have to really awkwardly say that he's fucking dead. Here's his box of shit. All right, see you guys later. <laughs> never, actually, you'll never see yeah. this goblin again." Um, yeah. So and Bertha she's, gets she's, his, Bertha, she gets hysterical blindness. The, the first bit that made me laugh was just like, and she was so so shocked by this, she went immediately blind, and I was just like, "Whoa, fucking that's an extreme reaction to bad news." <laughs> Delivered Dickens, shittily. Gets to the point here, yeah. But um, yeah, so she goes blind. Her dad like spends all his money and all of his time uh, not making toys and trying to get her cured. And the doctors are fucking useless and still collect their uh, bills anyway. And he ends up 
nearly about to go into the poor house. Oh, for, like, neglected to mention, he met the cricket just on the fucking road. He nearly stepped on him and was like, oh, lucky cricket, you can come live with us. He wasn't lucky enough, was he? No, that cricket was super fucking unlucky. That cricket, mm, I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah. Like, But like the guy was like, I'm going to go to the poor house. And the cricket's like, no, you shouldn't go to the poor house. You should go, looks across the road. Oh, fuck, there's a toy factory across the road. You could probably get a job there. And he's like, oh, shit, yeah. He didn't look across the fucking road? What is wrong with you, man? Anyway, he goes across the road. The guy yeah, runs yeah. it as a piece of shit. And he's like, <laughs> yep. If 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 the first if, if the dude had first given the bad news of the goblin, this is like the orc. Uh, <laughs> he has that, that, that kind of countenance yes. to himself. It's Mister Sackerton, uh, Mister Tackleton. Toy makers come threepence a dozen. So he's like, I'll, I'll agree to work here for just room and board and uh, like some meals and stuff. And your man's like, fantastic. Uh, so where are the other toy makers? You're the only one, fucker. Ha <laughs> ha. Gotcha. You didn't sign anything. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You're stuck here. Clearly. <laughs> Enjoy your indentured servitude uh, and your and your uh, absolute shambles of a quarter, as your absolute pigsty, absolute. But his, his uh, daughter. But, 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 but saying for Papa, what else our room like? It's like oh, the it's 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 like a it's like a big mansion. Yeah, we have like like you know. Lovely, like a hundred rooms, and this is not lovely. It's like, oh yes, uh, we got servants too. That'll be all, Smithers. You can go home now. <laughs> he starts play acting that he's actually working in a factory full of people, and he sings a song called "Through My, through my Eyes," where he sings to her like, "Oh, you'll see the world through my eyes." But is she really fooled by any of this? It, it's fortunate that not only did she go blind, but before she went blind, she was gullible as fuck. Um, <laughs> so that yeah, that, that was really handy for him. But yeah, he, he doesn't want her to know that they live in destitute, and he sleeps on the fucking floor and that kind of shit yeah, yeah. They, get an el- they get like an elderly tenant and say no oh, my old bones is a place to rest for the evening for the night and say, oh come in old man that's a, that's a very fake beard you have yes that's not yes, only I've a very fake beard but life. your eyes are drawn we- really weird like that one guy earlier <laughs> ah forget about that you're probably like a ah uh, but guy. surprised that was uh, her last love who was presumed dead at sea but actually he's coming <laughs> back but he didn't know how to how to approach it because this then suddenly Mr. Tackerton is saying, It's only right and proper that Bertha, you should get married to me, a wealthy toy factory owner. You shouldn't be living in sin like this. Yeah, um, so... The only other man you know! <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't marry your dad, that's illegal here! Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so the, the cricket actually fucking does something for once, and he teams up with his mates, a rat, a cockroach, and a third thing that never shows up again. Is it a dog? No, dogs. Are no, right. it's a dogs. I don't know. It's some other small animal, and they they fuck with him while he tries to propose, and he's like, "All right, crow," because he has a pet crow because he's a bastard. That's a, that's a villain pet, <laughs> and the crow's like, he says to the crow, "I need you to take this fucking cricket out," and the crow hires an assassin down at the docks. A pair of assassins. He goes to the animal mafia. He goes to the animal mafia where all the animals are wearing clothes all of a sudden in this fucking place, and there's a big yeah. musical number by a cat. Just this. This fucking musical number. Okay, let's stop here for a <laughs> moment. I think this is an important one to stop because it goes up wild at this stage. So that's fair. Yeah. Be- like we enter Fritz the cat land for a hot minute. Yes. In this. Yeah. Because there, this, this, that shape, yeah. this mm. cat burlesque dancer comes out and performs like a Dixieland jazz song about how much she loves fish and chips, yeah. which to be fair, fish and chips, delicious. Mm-hmm. I love a good basket of fish and chips. Who doesn't? It's a code, you know. <laughs> oh, is it now? You know, I like that too. Um, <laughs> but this is a Christmas cartoon, right? Uh, it and... stopped being a Christmas cartoon for a fucking a bit. Actually, the, there... the other part where he starts, it starts the film in Christmas and it's like, I remember how I found my family that I live with. It was spring. And it was just like, hang on a fucking sec. You're fucking, you're going very far away from Christmas. And then it got, gets involved in cat burlesque. And it's just like, fucking, where's the Christmas? <laughs> Oh, the toy maker who makes toys for Christmas? Yeah, he stopped doing that. (laughs) Because his daughter went blind from sadness. (laughs) God. Uh, Yeah, anyway, yeah. Cat Burlesque. But sorry, I'm I'm sorry. I I, I get hung up on this because it's just like, this is a a cartoon for children and I put it Mm -hmm. on TV and here's a a burlesque cat. And it's like, I swear to God, this is where Fritz the Cat comes from. I mean, you you put (laughs) a cartoon cat in a dress and have it sing a musical number about fish and chips. Somebody's going to get horny. That's just, that's that's (laughs) inevitable. That's, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna uh, you know unlock something for somebody. <laughs> but then yeah, Uriah hires the animal gangsters to kidnap the cricket and sell him to a, a Chinese. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, no, the the idea is that the monkey frigate? he hires to kill him is just like I get a better idea. I know a guy 
who is, who knows he can sell crickets to the Chinese for good fucking money. And I was like, surely they, that's a, like, a cricket is hard to catch, but there's not like, they're not plentiful, right? It's like, it's just this whole thing about crickets being lucky is yeah. some saying that goes, so who would want more luck than a, than like a, a ship's captain? So we'll just like, we'll put him in the bag and we'll put him in a little cage right here and bring him up to the ship's captain. So we'll while say, the cricket is got, smoking... Got a cricket for you. Wait, while the cricket <laughs> is smoking, <laughs> which he does constantly, um, they, yeah, keep, they kidnap yeah. him, tie him up in a little tiny thing, put a gag on him, and it's just like, they're way bigger than him. It's really weird. And they... Yeah. They, they, they bring that, to the ship's captain. Yes. Yeah. And it's a phone second. Like, okay, 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 give us our money. If I'm saying sure, we'll take payment in the hot lead. Bang, bang, bang. Those characters no are more dead. scene of, of the rest of, of those like of those character and animal characters. They were just like they shot that monkey sailor right between the eyes and tossed him overboard. <laughs> but you don't see that bit. That was no, fucking wild. Not. That was the other bit that made me laugh for like a good five minutes straight. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I did some, some quasi immediately. It's just like you know. So it's, it's, this is like this like ordinary sea captain. It's like dumb cricket doesn't work at all. I don't know if you're lucky anymore or not. Just he tosses that out over the side too. It's like so, the cricket plays possum. Give it a chance to work. Yeah, you know, yeah. give, give it a, give it a, give it a night to kind of resettle in. It might happen. Mm. And then cricket comes out over voiceover. And it's like my plan worked perfectly. Except that we're still tied up and thrown into the ocean. Uh, what was this thing? It's like I forgot crickets can't swim, but I also forgot that crickets float. So that worked out well for me. And here's how I got back and series of mad fucking events where he keeps bouncing off of fish basically like a humpback whale shoots him into a pelican's mouth and then the pelican drops him onto a seahorse and then he rides a seahorse home mm-hmm. okay sure yeah this is it's, this is the least implausible thing in this christmas cartoon i just saw a sailor the- monkey got fucking murdered all right i've <laughs> seen some shit that you, you you can't phase me now movie well guess what we're about to we're about to like shift gears in, into you know high crazyville because he comes back to the house and it's christmas eve midnight on christmas eve and at at the stroke of midnight on christmas eve all the toys in the toy factory come alive that's right there's just enough magic to bring all the toys alive for like five fucking minutes so he says to the toys all right toys toys, get your shit together come up with a fucking plan to save the fucking day because oh yeah obviously your one has till tomorrow i think they're gonna get married on christmas day so that way they don't waste the um Mm. The day off. It's an easy, an easy, easy anniversary to remember. <laughs> that, yeah, sure. Uh, oh, my anniversary gift is also a Christmas gift. That's a bummer. Mm. Uh, well, well, unless it's twice as nice, unless it gets, it's like double the size or double the it, like. Yeah, it, be, it better quality. be. <laughs> uh, What's the toys' birth- plan? It's like sweet. Your birthday and, and- what's, 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 what's this sweet like an army of toys we're able to like you know, put together some kind of plan this is like actually as magical toys we're just kind of like strangely well informed about the plot so um, mm. that old that old lodger it's actually for fiance you know the fake beard's a dead giveaway I, we're, we're gonna, gonna go back to being and, and I'm not just now yeah they, they only have, they only have long enough to tell him that humans can never see toys come to life those are the fucking rules yeah, the Toy Story rules. Eh? The Toy the Story rules. Item. Yeah, what was that was back Jim Henson way. one where the, the toys came alive, and if you saw them th- move, that that would instantly fucking kill them. Um, uh, you know the one. Their soul escapes their body. Yeah, <laughs> is that the is that the plot of the Christmas toy? I think that was the Christmas toy. Is that what that's about? That terrified no me idea. as a child because I didn't want to look at my toys in case I fucking killed them. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, yeah. Sorry. Oh boy. That's, oh, that's fine. <laughs> Complete tangent, but yeah, don't look at your toys; you'll kill them. Um, on Christmas Eve. <laughs> anyway, yes, uh, the old lodger is the guy wearing a fake beard. Um, the cricket's like, what the fuck? Why didn't you fucking say anything? It's like, well, I knew I sent her blind from sadness. So I was just kind of like feeling it out. You know, I was just trying to get a thing. But then I heard she was going to be married. And I was like, ah, I can't really interfere. It's kind of awkward now. I don't want to be doing that. It's like, oh, get in there, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and now here's here's the thing. Hmm. The first time I watched this back Christmas Eve yeah. last year, I turned it off before the end because I just assumed, oh, I know how this is going to go. He's going to reveal himself and her blindness will be cured. No. That doesn't happen. No, no. Stays blind. <laughs> she's blind for life. Stays blind, but she's happy now. But she's happy now, exactly. So everything is still hunky dory and fine. And then Tackleton comes back, Tackleton's and he gets back. all. They've already been married at this stage, have they? Yes, uh, yeah, because uh, oh, yeah. Bertha and Edward snuck off to get married in a church that looks like it was drawn by a six-year-old. Yeah. 
Uh, it's, it's, it's like oh, musical numbers. They're just like no, it's going to be like the wedding they're going to have. Uh, and like like once they get out all organized. No, we're going to have it right now. Uh, <laughs> Let's just do it like, right just, here. Just just just, just press processing that, that that you're still alive. And I'm done. Okay, we we'll just get married now. <laughs> well, I mean, like you left it off for so long, you probably should. It's just like okay, I'm not going to fucking wait on shit anymore. That's obviously fucked us over. I need yeah. a Christmas gift really quickly. Uh, <laughs> well, let's get married. Uh, we already had dinner. I mean, it was a two a two year engagement, right? That's, that's that makes sense. Yeah, uh, yeah that's true. <laughs> I guess, kind of, not really. Two years longer for some or some than others. Mm. So yeah, <laughs> well, true well, that. Who, who, let, let's not play a game of who has it worse. You know, you, when I got hysterical blindness, I was uh, left adrift uh, in the South Pacific for you know many many months. <laughs> When... He was saved by a whaler or something. It's a good thing they kill whales because um, otherwise I, I would have died on that island. But anyway, Tackleton comes in the door. He's like, what the fuck? You're already married? And she's like, oh yeah, don't worry. Uh, here's the first compliment you've ever fucking received in your whole shitty life. And he's like, wow, I now know the true meaning of Christmas. I'm a nice yeah. guy now. Uh, I guess the crow was the bad influence on him, right? Cause... Well, the crow is dead. Yeah, now, the crow is so fucking dead. Okay. In an unmarked grave or thrown, at, thrown out at sea or something like that. Yeah, it's grand. You live by the monkey sailor assassin, you die by the monkey sailor assassin. <laughs> or, well, at least hmm. whoever you get involved with by keeping that kind of company yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's the, that's the end of it. It ends with Tackleton, I guess, being shown a measure of kindness and then all of a sudden deciding of course it's wonderful and happy and great it's christmas but merry christmas everyone and mm. that's that's the cricket on the hearth hmm. and here comes the part where i ha- i have to tell you kind of how faithful or not this is to the actual story so it it leaves out the whole Ooh. subplot of infidelity with a completely different family which is like the main characters nearly for most of it isn't it yes and, and they're completely yeah. cut out of this entire short <laughs> They Don't couldn't get. fit it in. They just had so much fucking sailor murder to do. Yeah, that would have meant five less musical numbers. You can't have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We only have Danny Thomas for so long. Okay. Hmm, hmm. Hmm. Uh, but no, uh, in the in the original story, Bertha and Edward are siblings, so we, you know we can't have can't have that. So Edward in the short is betrothed to a, a woman named May. That's who Tackleton is trying to marry. In, oh, in, they kind of fuse the characters to get. I see. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And and so that that's you know he still it goes off to I think in the book in the the story it says South America and he comes home and he puts on the disguise because he realizes like I can't show my face here after two years it'll it'll frighten her to death hmm. and um, you know so they do that whole rigmarole still and hmm. um, yeah Bertha as it turns out has always been blind. Like she's ah, Caleb's right. blind daughter. Wait, so, so, so they the, added uh, like blind induced sadness in this fucking thing. Yes. <laughs> this was a Rankin Bass original invention. Wow. You gotta have stakes. You gotta have it all just a, a dramatic turn mm. early on. But the, like, oh, no, if you invent sadness they, based bl- blindness, you can induce like unblindness based happiness. I guess that actually might be a bit ableist now that I think about it. I mean, like, it, hey, the first not, thing is ableist anyway, but not to do an ableist. King of the twice. Hill did it. I was a, King just of the Hill about did it, so they get a pass. to say King of the Hill did this, and I thought about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or Hank sees his mom having sex, and it makes him go blind, and then his, I guess, 2B stepfather basically apologizes, takes him to church, and his, his he hysterical blindness, he sees the light, and he comes back. <sighs> it's cricket on the hearts oh yeah on the mantelpiece and in the pantry and everywhere oh you don't want to know <laughs> on the kitchen table no less hmm. oh boy but yeah so again the the dickens story is very much a case of getting paid you know by the word because hmm. it's it's extremely drawn out but it's also very the crick like the cricket is has less to do with it than you would think. And I think that Rick and Bass knew that. And they were like, well, we got to make a, a character out of this. We have to have him be the main character of our story. Of course. It's called cricket or cricket on the hearth. It can't not be a speaking, singing character. That's right. not mm-hmm. allowed. Um, yeah. The cricket is like just, Hey, it's lucky to have a cricket on your fireplace in the winter or something. Right. That's all it is. Hmm. It's otherwise barely involved in proceedings. Even like the magical toys, uh, just like we're just here to deliver like a, a minor bit of, of exposition that you, like, as an audience or reader, you probably have figured out by now. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go back to not being alive. Ooh. 
when they're down. <laughs> Power he's down. Picking himself, yeah, he's just like there. He's just like fun. It's Roddy McDowell. He's going to be like, like, like crack and wise, you know, and being Roddy McDowell. Mm. That's primarily why he's here. Everything else, you know, just, he's only just there just to kind of, oh yeah, you're this him with a fake beard. You know, she's here for people and saying, yeah, but I'm awkward. It's like, get in there, pal. You he, know, he's only there to be p- exceptionally unlucky, point out the obvious, and nearly get assassinated. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Real lucky. <laughs> Real lucky indeed. <laughs> So then, then I went and I found the um, the short silent film from 1909. It's on YouTube. I'll put that on the show notes. Hmm. Uh, incidentally, it was directed by D.W. Griffith, which is not great. Uh-huh. But hmm. uh, that being that being what it is, you know, it's still the first film adaptation. And I watched that this afternoon, and it made me realize what the the story it really is because you have in 12 minutes in a short silent film you have to really pare it down to like the bare bones essentials yeah, like, yeah. what is the story about and the story and that story is about edward going off to sea disappearing for two years and coming home you know in a fake beard to marry his his beloved and that's the whole thing there's there's really not much more to it than that hmm. not in the least and uh... I, I think in so much as like there's anything magical about the story that really is what Dickens was getting at was just like, yeah, let's, it's just a, a family drama at its heart. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, and there, and there's, That's hers. oh uh, man, it was right there on the tip of my tongue and I missed it. <laughs> this is why we have guests so I, they can tell me how unclever I am. Call you on your bullshit? <laughs> I, I mean, oh, well, your <laughs> sterling, it, incisive commentary. It is yeah. what it is, folks. Uh. <laughs> Like it, it, it's a standard um, um, Dickens stuff of like because much of all as a Christmas Carol is beloved that was just based on the the at the time um, uh, Christmas tradition of telling each other spooky stories which eventually made its way over to Halloween but um, it's just mm. like because it's fun we're all trapped indoors it's like ooh let's tell each other spooky stories by the firelight it's, it'll be cool um, and this is it's a similar thing like family drama it's like ooh a cool story that we can get our teeth into it, it's one of those kind of things yeah. It doesn't feel like it has that kind of like uh, a kind of stick, that kind of like kind of like gravity to it. Uh, mm. <laughs> this was also like that done up, up, up as a play, and Vladimir Lenin left in disgust because <laughs> he found it dull and saccharine. Uh, I, dear. I, I love. I saw that on Wikipedia as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not not to blow up your your sources. I, I love the second sentence of that where it says, "We only know this because George Orwell wrote about it." <laughs> George Orwell and fucking Lennon. I was Lennon there, man. He was super it. pissed. Uh, you, you guys will never believe what I saw Lennon do tonight. It, it's mm. it's fun because it makes like history sound like it was just like five guys who lived like in on the same fucking in the same apartment complex and yeah that kind of shit. It, it seems like history was like really fucking condensed. Everyone knew each other. Kind of thing. I guess they're all Dickens fans, or they've heard of it anyway. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a very uh, King's Man version of history, where like there's right, oh, there's yeah. only five there's only five main characters to all of history. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> but I, it's understandable that why this one is doesn't come up as often in the right of Dickens, and particularly around Christmas ones, because there's one big one that everyone knows, and it kind of eclipses this fairly wholesale. Yeah. Uh, like when whatever form you take it in, it's just like there's not a ton to go on here. Uh, mm, mm. To get 50 minutes out of this, we had to put in a lot of musical numbers, and even then, you're cutting out stuff uh, to do that in. Exactly. They go, exactly. Also, they also didn't know what sells. They know what 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 what, 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 what we're trying to do here. Uh, mm. In getting to the point, we also took a very roundabout way. It's uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I feel it's like a bit of a contradiction from what you're what you're saying, Joe, of it being like a um, a family drama, uh, and that, that's the kind of condensed. Um, God, how long was the the silent film version? Like ten? It, it was twelve minutes. Twelve exactly. minutes. Fucking hell! That's yeah. Right. Um, I I think the way to do, to adapt the story correctly would be to do it as either a, a kind of a Indian or Mexican drama. I think that'd be the way to do it. Like, just people slapping the fuck out of each other, busting out musical numbers. Like, they know how to fucking do dramas better than anyone else I've ever seen. <laughs> like a, bo- a big Bollywood-style, like, musical a, extravaganza? Either, yeah, a big Bollywood musical-style extravaganza or a Mexican soap opera. Fucking fantastic <clears throat> fucking shit. It's just like, I can't believe you were in disguise this whole time. Slaps. You know, that kind of way. 
The cricket Father, gets two slaps in I'm the blind! And then the whole exactly. blind musical number. Yes, yes. Hmm. See, this is the hmm. Santa's workshop we need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Hmm. Uh, maybe a little bit of this is um, your in your ranking bass specials mm. you're going to all be going uh, at least in my own experience one or two ways you're going to get your stop motion ones like you know, all like, like, oh, them or they're going to be the ones that were probably done by studio uh, top craft which mm-hmm. were would eventually become the renowned studio Ghibli mm. uh, whereas this is somewhere kind of in the middle because this was uh, as Rankin Bass did they um, this is I suppose you call it a co-production. They already yeah. say they outsourced the like actual animation work to a uh, different studio. So they worked with a couple of Japanese studios. Mm-hmm. So Top Craft was one. Right. Uh, the ones did stop motion ones as well. I was. I'm. I'm, I'm working on a little presentation about that. Uh, oh, for that one of the most, panels. Well, that, that's what you like your your main man, uh, Tadahito Mochinaga of Mom Productions. Mm-hmm. I mean, like he's basically he the uh, the Rankin Bass style of character. That's that's his style, basically. Yeah. Yes, uh, or as this one was an outfit called uh, initially TCJ to uh, what's that? TCJ Television Corporation of Japan, mm. which later became uh, Aiken, and they're the studio who uh, well, most doing other things like you know, adaptations of like Tetsujin Twenty Eight, aka Gigantor mm-hmm. or Eight Man, uh, which were kind of black and white studios that actually made their way over to America at least in a dubbed format and changed around it a little bit. Mm. They're also the ones uh, who produced the actual longest running uh, family uh, character sitcom in the world, Sazai Sun. Oh, that's them. Actually, still oh, making today. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they they have not make, stopped making Sazai Sun, so it's it you, you still can't take the Crown Simpsons. You got to wait for them to finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and certainly in the early days, uh, they had a very, I suppose. Like UPA esque kind of a style to work for. It's mm-hmm. like you wouldn't get an issue that's, that's straight up up. This is like, oh, this is made by a Japanese studio. Fun and say, no, there's something in the character designs that have the, um, that UPA kind of quality to them. It's similarly, as well with, with the backgrounds and how they love placing them. Maybe not even on the background. It's just like a solid block of color, uh, which yeah. again was a lot of UPA cartoons as well. I, I did in, I so, did enjoy slash was confused by um, the especially in like the musical numbers for any of the transitions they had like a weird abstract shapes and flashing lights to um to to do those transitions and it was always like okay what the hell am i looking at and then it wildly turns into the sea or something like that um yeah there's loads of kind of cutaways so we were not quite sure how to bridge yeah. this we're just like you know we're gonna like kind of drag something in front of the lens or do like you know a weird kind of like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like, like cut away to like a static painting and sometimes the painting is, is you know very well crafted and sometimes like in that final church scene it's it's very slapdash like the 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 stained glass jesus on that last one i swear is just we have five minutes to complete this before we ship it off to the U.S. Let's yeah. go, people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 There's loads of, of, of dragging things across the cell to simulate movement. Yeah. I, I kept spotting, like, an arm had forgotten be, to be drawn in before it suddenly appeared, that kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, like, it's not even the uh, in the ranking bass ranking. The ranking bass ranking. Of bass, Ooh, nice. Uh, that it doesn't even like chart very prominently on their inner in like um, based on a story you know or familiar with, mm-hmm. or even that in like on a visual kind of craftsmanship level. Not to give them a knock. I mean, you know, if only we outsource probably what was already a Nova Work Studio and to go and send you back like something that's you know they'll, they've done their best at what they got. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, it doesn't really kind of chart the same way as some of those other ones that have been mentioned already. Mm. I mean, the, the only reason that we're even talking about this today is because I have a, a, a Blu-ray set right here with, like, five Rankin-Bass specials on it. Uh, the first four, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, mm-hmm. Frosty the Snowman, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, The Little Drummer Boy. Those, those are all fairly, you know, fairly well-known, fairly popular specials. And then the fifth one, Crank It on the Hearth, is just, I guess, well, we've got room for one more. What do you, what do you want to pick? <laughs> uh, and they just said, uh, which, whichever one's first. I guess. Mm. But there it is. I mean, it's fine. See, I don't even want to say it's fine because no, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. See, here's the thing Um, I I thought would happen and it it has happened and I'm glad it's happened. It's it's a Christmas fucking miracle despite not being Christmas. Um, I didn't enjoy watching it. However, I thoroughly enjoy talking about it with you guys. Um, So so I'm like, is this a thing? (laughs) Like, I, I know your metric is like the, the, 
would you put it on at a Christmas party? Would you put this on to make people go, what the fuck? You know, like just to distract them for a second. <laughs> Like, I think I would I would put this on in the hopes that people would leave. <laughs> oh, this is a wind it up, wrap it up, guys. Come on, we got shit to do. It's, I mean, that's not even like to say that it's like offensively like an awful or like that. It's just sort of it's powerfully average, mm, powerfully mm. middling. Uh, the, 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 it's well, not it's so not bad that it's just like, oh, this is here. so bad. You gotta watch this, or this is actually genuinely a fucking stone cold classic. It's just like this is middle. It's acceptable it has some qualities to it <laughs> you can't even like you can't even not the voice acting like that much it's like, grand they're, they're, they're doing a good they're job doing all like, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, even if like uh, the character design on the father Caleb you know even when he's like you know he's clutching his eyes with, t- with tears he still has this like very um, he's got the the, uh, the kind of rictus rankin bass uh, 2d sorry um, uh, 3d model face where he's still slightly smiling a little all the time slightly little grin of the same <laughs> oh oh my god my, my, my daughter she's gone blind and he's just like why do you look pleased almost like this? trying to stop, 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 stop the tears in his eyes but he's still like you know he has this like very <laughs> you know, crooner handsome face with a little kind of like flirtatious smirk and I was like, I'm not I'm not quite selling this no like Danny Thomas is doing his best he's trying to put on any emotion yeah you're not kind of getting getting met halfway well, I, on the visual I, I don't know how good of an actor he is but this animated version of him is making him look like a worse actor than I imagine he is so yeah <laughs> doing him no favors <laughs> yeah, not at yeah. all <laughs> well that, that's often the way you're like with Oh, you're so good in front of the camera and in front of an audience and working with people. You got this whole like a very like l- like real good uh, rapport with them. But saying, "Oh, we're good. We'll pour power came from a microphone. Just go nuts on that," and then they just can't. Uh, you just got you got to so sell it with your voice, and sometimes you just can't reach those you know those emotional notes like you can on on screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you ha- so you have like the you know what we see uh, in decades like since for oh here's like you know summer like animated like big brother film hmm. uh, like we have a cast of all your hollywood favorites oh i know him from that film. i know him from that film. never seen him in a cartoon though maybe he'd be, he'd be all right he's he's kind of he's kind of okay <laughs> you know, he's not, not really as, not really as good as he was in training day but uh a lot i tell just like taking what it is hmm. there's some of them just can't um do that same level of intensity like they bring that same uh emotion or that no with just a voice performance yeah it, it always uh, bothers me when they do like um some animated thing and they just bring in like whatever Hollywood fucking actor kind of guy to do it because this would be fine get a voice actor get a fucking just voice actor anything. They know there is a bunch of professionals there who are very good at their job and this person's like they need to act with their, their body and their, their face and yeah if, if they're not playing with that they don't really know what to fucking do and their affectation comes across super flat and annoying um, yeah. that isn't the case well, here it's, it's, it's perfectly it's, acceptable here it's fine yeah it's not, it's not exceptional, yeah, yeah. but it's not, it's not bad. It's just tough. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's a, 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 a different skill set required. Yeah, uh, yeah. They think, oh, I'll just do a voice actor, voice performance thing. It'll be fine because I gotta do less. But no, you gotta do more, but in a different way. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll always love Gore Verbinski after doing, after doing however many Pirates of the Caribbean films. I'm gonna take it easy and do an animated feature, and immediately ate shit <laughs> when he was me eating Rango, <laughs> making Rango, but say I thought it's gonna be like no little break, and that's gonna be a good time. I'm never gonna make an animated film again. No, it's a nightmare. <sighs> <laughs> It was okay. Yeah, it was okay. It, it so, did have a snake with a mustache. You gotta give it that. This is true. Hmm. If if Rango has nothing else, it's got a, it's got a snake with a mustache. Um, but speaking of voice actors, you know we haven't even talked about Paul Frees yet, who hmm. plays nine characters in this animated <laughs> he is short. Here, yeah, he's doing hard work. <laughs> he plays Jeremiah Bleak, the man who b- barges in and says, "Guess what? E- Edward is dead," and then leaves. Hmm. Hmm. Plays the money lender. <laughs> he plays the crow Uriah. He plays a dog, he plays a strangler, he plays Slink, the ship captain, he plays the toy elephant, and also the rocking horse. I'm surprised he didn't play the cat, honestly, with that kind of yeah. range. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, he, he's a ranking bass mainstay. Yes, uh, yes. I think he's pretty much uh, been in all of them. I think he's been in all of yeah, them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm looking at his, his, his list here, and he, it goes everything from Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol all the way down to Jack Frost. Uh, yeah, 1979. Yeah. If you do go to another Rankin Bass Christmas thing, you will be hearing him. Um, basically, yeah. yeah. And also, both of their uh, Tolkien adaptations as well. That's right. right. Uh, isn't he Boromir? Yeah. I think he's Bomber. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then various uh, orcs in The Return of the King, and um, 
Uh, oh, it was Elrond as well. I don't know. Ah, okay, okay. But yeah, he's he's like an you know, he's like a real just uh, real grafter. Just like stick him in there, he'll do good work. Mm-hmm. And if you ever go to a Disney theme park and you ride the Haunted Mansion, he is your uh, ghost host. Oh, as, as it were. Ah, yeah, yeah, he's the narrator. So Paul Fries, we love him around here. He he does good work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess that's that's all we've got for cricket on the hearth. Unless uh, you have any final thoughts for us. Um, but if not, we're going to jump straight to the crankometer where we will rate this puppy and be on our merry way. Uh, have we managed to oh, talk yes. about it for as long as the film is? Just about. And, and now you know, <laughs> we're going into extra. Now we're Time's running out. <laughs> now we're going into extra innings. So buckle Ooh. up. All right. Okay. The crankometer is our patented X, Y axis for rating Christmas movies. This is how we do it around here. Just deal with it. The X axis is how Christmassy uh, a film or a special is. And the Y axis is how, the quality question, how good it is. So how Christmassy is um, cricket on the hearth on a scale of say negative five to f- positive five. A tough this is, one. It, is this a plus uh, one or a minus one or a zero? It's definitely it's definitely set at Christmas and there was no a lot part of, of it like, said you know, during spring. Up. Um, so that's very. <laughs> it was a lot of being up spirit of but, Christmas. Yada 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 yada. That uh, the, at the kind of crux of it could it have uh, taken place at any other time of the year besides Christmas or it was less of a uh, waiting on the importance of Christmas? Would it have made, been any way any way different at all? Um, Christmas is already kind of mentioned. Just There's like one song about Christmas, right but it's like a pretend right the end, Christmas that he's setting up for to. his daughter. It's like, oh yeah, it's totally fucking Christmas. I'm totally going to put up direct de- decorations, <laughs> even though you can't see. Like it's pretend Christmas. Um, and the, and there's a song about Jesus. Uh, it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, there. That's a it's a real it's, it's a real reason for the season kind of song too. Um, but mm-hmm. the 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 plot is resolved because you know midnight on Christmas Eve the the toys come alive. I explained the plot to one of the main ex- characters. Exactly. Mm. So that could have that reveal could have happened in any other way at any other time. I mean, like toys can come alive on mm. Halloween to murder you and possibly reveal the plot to the main character. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, mm. I mean, witchcraft doesn't uh, necessarily have to confine itself to certain calendar months. It's, uh, it's it's it should be free and easy. Also, if the characters uh, were paying attention, they would have figured it out without the intervention of magical toys. It's, it's mm. possibly because of the presence, the ongoing presence of a, of a of a kindly old toy maker. It's like, oh well, you know, it's obviously that's Christmas fodder right there, right? It's be God's be Christmas thing. Of course, at least it is. It is the way Dickens wrote it. You can't blame it on us. That's the way he wrote it. Uh, <laughs> We're just adapting like, here's, it. The, here's the thing. It, it's actually, if you think about it, like a good adaptation because they are both commercial products made to just fucking sell it on the Christmas season, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Even in Dickens' day, they sold it on the basis of, well, this guy wrote a Christmas carol and you love that, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh... So if you're coming at, no, is it a Christmassy in the sense that, well, it's, it's just like shitting for like a capitalist monopoly, that kind of a job, then yeah, it is very much. So what's, what's that, um, one? <laughs> I mean the, the barest minimum of a positivity. Yeah, we'll give it a one. It is more Christmassy. The toys, than the toys come to life. How about that? Yeah. yeah, like the yeah, the toys come to life. We at least get a decent Christmas song that's that doesn't feel uh cloying or a, a, a I don't want to say oppressive, but just you know how some Christmas songs can just be a little too precious about, you know, the religious yeah. side of the holiday. And then we do get it a religious like, song that isn't as religious as it could have been, which is thankful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I think they play that just about right. So, you know what? I'm, I'll give this a positive too on the Christmas side because they do enough with it but they don't overplay their hand okay fair enough. one point for like the getting you into it one point for getting you out because it was just more christmas as hell because they lead off with a very catchy song it's like there's a cricket on the heart dun, 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 okay. dun, yeah, dun, dun, that kind of way and it's oh i'm here for a good time it's like oh it's kind of just like fairly okay time. Just, mm. uh victorian sort of like comedy slash tragedy of, of mar- manners slash errors uh oh it's christmas again okay cool it's a cricket on the heart oh it's dan thomas again love that dude he's so kindly <laughs> yeah yeah so it, it starts you off well and it leaves you off well it's just that middle section the starter was, was like, good the yeah. dessert was good what would, what do we have for dinner ah fucking no the dessert was good it's fine <laughs> the turkey was dry the turkey was very dry <laughs> oh that's a, that's a, as good a metaphor as i can think of 
Yeah, yeah. I think a two is fair. I think a two is okay. very fair. So yeah. Okay. Then, mm. th- then I think it's settled. So uh, Y axis, how the quality? Did we all even enjoy this? I don't feel like we enjoyed it at all. Did we? Did we, we hate, hate it? it? That's the, I think the important thing. Did we hate like, it. I, I think we're. Can we? Can we score I, thing zero? Is that possible? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. That's yeah, yeah. Just true neutral, value maybe? neutral. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's, I don't think it's uh, there was any any animosity in me to say like one say no fuck put this thing in the ground. It made me laugh Uh, out loud several times, but it also like (laughs) made me go what the fuck is happening several times. So (laughs) can we just can we just give it a point for just the 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 double cross of the the murder the the, of the gangster animals? Just like you know, (laughs) just like that was very good. I think, oh, he's like, no, like, we're going to like, have this plot. We're going to like, bang him up. It should be an easy thing for a crow to do, at least. They're much less a monkey and then a dog to actually get in on the action <laughs> as well. But they, they, they get it together and think, oh, it's going to ship him off and he's going to go to escape the ship from the captain bus. Just got to put that detail in there. It's like, no loose ends. <laughs> uh, I, I, I didn't subject my partner to watching this, but I did have to show him that scene because I was just like, this is fucking bananas. Watch this. <laughs> Um, so yeah, no, I think a point for that. Like I'm, yeah, I'll give I'll give it that. Like it's, it's not as terrible as I initially thought it was. It's more just inscrutable. Like yeah, you yeah. watch it, you watch it now, and you go, what were they thinking back then? <laughs> we need not Christmas just in nineteen. 19- That's what. Not doing. just in nineteen sixty seven, but also like eighteen forty five. Like what was Dickens smoking when he wrote this? But he's not responsible for all the really weird opium. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> But he's not really responsible for all the really truly strange turns that this this cartoon takes. Maybe he was trying to write a story that that no one could fucking predict how it went and fucking success in this adaptation. Yeah. (laughs) So are we going to land on a a positive two, positive one for Cricket on the Hearth? I think we are. That's way more generous than I thought we were going to be. Yeah. Me me too. (laughs) Because... Going into this, I was ready for this to be a, a disaster, but I think we came around to like, you know what? The weirdness is part of the charm. Hmm. I, I'm glad I could share this experience with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> on this on this podcast, Enterprise alone, you've had some actually dire things. That's you know, fair. Like, wow, yeah. wow, yeah. We, in this, like soul sucking. Look, we of. literally just watched a wrestling Christmas miracle. Anything yes. uh, anything <laughs> after that is only going to go up from here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you got. You do that's, have to compare it for, to the other, um, the other things in the archive. Yeah, for sure. Like that's what the lads are into because they're still in the fucking iron lung, you know, and they're recuperating in the ICU from that one. <laughs> uh, you, 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 you weren't supposed to tell anybody that. Jeez. <laughs> oh, ever that the day went to live at a farm somewhere. They're, they're, they're at a day spa. Uh, they went to Christmas getting... farm to to be better at Christmas. That's right. I sent them to a Christmas tree farm upstate. That's yes, right. To run and play with all the other Christmas trees. That's right. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can frolic in the meadows. <laughs> we cleared. We, we, now we now we have meadows because we, because we cleared them all down because we got new Christmas trees. Hmm. <laughs> oh boy! But yeah, cricket on the hearth. Go check it out if you want. It's on YouTube and. Uh, let us know what you think. Are, are we crazy? Is this worse than we think it is? Let us know. Maybe you're crazy. I mean, like, I, I think you, if you watch it, you you maybe won't enjoy it, but you will be thinking about that fucking, that, some of the weird fucking turns of this movie, for sure. Yeah. I guarantee we're going to get at least one message from somebody saying, what are you talking about? This is an absolute classic. <laughs> Hey, I mean, this is all subjective. Everyone's got a fucking favorite, and um, yeah, you're wrong. You're yeah, wrong. I'm fine. right, and you're wrong. That's just <laughs> that's just how science works. I don't fucking make the rules. I mean, yeah, everything is somebody's favorite thing, and and somebody out there, that thing is cricket on the hearth. And you know what? That's fine. No, that they are actually 100 percent right in it being their favorite thing. I like some utter fucking I've trash, and I've... It, I, I I have no qualms about it being trash. But I love it with every part of my being. Um, yeah. <laughs> No one can take that from you. Don't worry about it. No. Yeah. But I yeah. I, uh, I, I prefer the studios work on Giganta probably. There's not more giant robots than that. <laughs> That's you know, true. If you a giant robot in here somehow, even in the background, it would have done a lot for the score. But here mm-hmm. we are. You, get, you, get, you, got, you, take, you take whatever to give him to. Uh, if, if the cricket had just built himself a mecha to ride around on to fight the, 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 the crow, that would have been that would have been like the chef's kiss on the whole thing. Mm. But, uh, but alas. Mm. Uh, so friends, if you want to send us anything on the internet... It, <laughs> Send us no! Don't send us anything on the don't. internet. Yeah, there's a lot of bad God, stuff no, on that internet. Please, I have mercy. If, if you would like to send us questions or comments of that nature, uh, you can email us anything at xmascreeps at gmail dot com. You can tweet at us at Christmas Creeps on Twitter. Uh, Niall and Dwayne, uh, where can our listeners find you and Secret of the Sailor Madness? 
Ooh. Secret of Certain Madness can be found at, get this, secretofcertainmadness.com. My goodness. <laughs> Available on all your uh, podcast aggregators. Not, limited but not included to, uh, no, no, including but not limited mm. to, my apologies, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Titcher Pod Directory, and probably a few other ones that send me emails saying, hey, we've, we've found your podcast. Thanks. Keep spreading that word, Bodie. Mm, mm. Uh, Complaints can be submitted to us on the socials. Uh, for me personally, at Nicholas Cage, as N I A L L C U L A S underscore Cage. It could be nice words too. I don't think there's complaints. So whatever you got to say. Hmm. I'm on Twitter at I underscore M underscore D on the Twitter for my sins. Um, I try and make it nicer there. It's fucking impossible. Mm. Yeah, whatever we're doing is generally about animation, cartoons, uh, and how they enrich our lives. Hmm. Um, so look forward to more of that if you follow us on oh those. and we're mm-hmm. also on uh, we're, we talk about anime because we're just that kind of fucking internet guy um, <laughs> on, uh, 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 let's go jo- is it let's go Jojo show on YouTube or if you want to see us if you yes, want to look at our fucking YouTube. faces for some reason yeah we do that every Tuesday YouTube. and Wednesday com for- uh, one or the other depending on the week <laughs> yeah depending on my schedule yeah, yes, it's just as that's- that's just weekly anime episodes week to week because like hey it's just like you know keep up what's coming out what's new what's fresh what's hot fresh from the oven uh, mm, we're in the new season now so we're not uh, lacking for anime we've actually got like too many good things and we have to drop a bunch <laughs> oh wow <laughs> sure ah <laughs> uh, well that's always just that the long knives come out at the start of the season if one thing well that was that's pretty alright but you know I have something absolutely monumentally fantastic here so sorry yeah, for, yeah. C- 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 for time uh, anyways, that is as you can say, uh, youtube.com forward slash let's go JoJo mm-hmm. show. Because when JoJo Bizarre Adventure was on, that's when we we're let's go JoJo again. But for the interim period, for the rest of the year, we're just let's go. Uh, JoJo is currently still anyway. locked in Netflix jail for the second season, heavy inverted commas, the second half of the first fucking season. Um, but you know, that's that's oh. what that's the fucking shit. You gotta deal with it. Second season, <laughs> God, we gotta be careful with those. You can cancel those after a second series, and then you never see any more of them. <laughs> uh. Oh, Netflix! What won't you take from us next? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, folks, uh, that's gonna do it for Christmas creeps. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've certainly enjoyed it. Niall and Dwayne, thank you for joining us on this uh, ridiculous adventure. No, oh, thanks for having us, man. Thanks for having oh, us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jigs. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yo, somebody owes somebody a coke. <laughs> Uh, but until next time, I'm Joseph Wade. I'm Dwayne Maloney. I'm Nile uh, Flanagan. Wishing you all a happy Christmas in April. Good night, everybody. Please, Nabi Dad. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas.